Let's take a look at the Schoology app from the parent perspective. The first thing I want to do is log in. I want to find my school in the log in through your school text area. If I come in, I can start typing the name of my school. When the school that I have students at appears, all I have to do is select that school, and then I can type in my username and password to log in. Once I log in, it's going to take me to my course dashboard. I am not currently enrolled in any courses, but I do want to view the courses that my students are enrolled in. Before I view any of my students' information, I am going to take you on a tour of the navigation for the app. If you look down at the bottom of our screen, you'll notice a clock icon. When I click on that, that is going to take me to my recent activity. This is a location where I have a feed of all of the update posts that have been posted within courses and groups that I belong to. If I keep going to the right in the navigation bar at the bottom, the squares icon, this is that course dashboard view. And then if I go to the right, I also have a calendar view. In the calendar, this is where I can find any activities or dates that have been created and posted within the courses and the groups that I belong to. I'm going to go ahead and click on the three bars in the top left corner. This is going to open up a navigation bar for other places within my site. You'll notice just below the home button, I have a My Children button. When I click on this, this is going to allow me to view information for my student. Across the blue bar, I have courses, groups, and more. I'm currently viewing information for my daughter, Lainey Dawson. I can see that she has posted updates in some of her courses. She has work that she has submitted. She also has some discussion posts that she has replied to as well. When I click on the Courses button, this will show me all of the courses that my daughter is a member of. If I want to jump into a course and view it, I am going to have read-only access as a parent. I can go in and I can view different folders of information. I can view assignments, but I am not able to edit or submit or add posts to any of the assignments or any of the materials that are shared here in the course. I'm going to open up this first folder. You'll notice I can view all of the information here. If I select the Discovery of America assignment, I can see that my student, my daughter, Lainey, has submitted an assignment for this particular activity. If I go back and I select this discussion board, Thinking Out Loud, this shows me my student, Lainey, her posts within the discussion board. It also shows me that other students have posted, but I'm not allowed to see who that student is or the information that they have posted. You'll notice I also do not have access to post anything myself. Jumping back into this folder, at the very bottom, you'll see that there is a media album, Early American Explorers Project. If I open this up, you'll notice I can read the directions for this media album and I can see the content that has been posted here. But I do not have the ability to go in and to post or share any media myself. When I go up to the top and select groups, if my daughter Lainey is a member of any groups, her groups will appear there and I could go in and I can view the groups and the information that has been shared with her in that location as well. If I select the more option, I can view Lainey's grades and I can view a calendar for all of the events that Lainey has coming up. This will show events for all of her courses. Let's take a quick look at grades. I can view a grade report. I can view mastery if the classrooms are grading based on a standards-based scale. I can also view her attendance. If I select that grade report, this is going to ask me to select the course I want to view the grades for. And when I click on that course title, I can see all of her grades that she has for different assignments, tests, quizzes, discussion boards. 
if I go back up to the top, you can see just to the right of grades, I have an attendance option. I can then again click on that course and then I can see how many absences she has, how many late attendances she has, and how many excused absences she has. If I go back up to more, I can select calendar. When I go back up to the top and select my three lines, this again pulls up that menu on the left. For myself, Chad Dawson, I can view any messages that I have received. I can view any notifications that I have. I can view any requests. I can also go back to my home page, which is my course dashboard. I can select courses if I'm a member of any courses. I can select groups if I'm a member of any groups. I'm going to go ahead and open up this group. And let's just take a quick look here. You can see that the course admin, one of my daughter's teachers, has posted some different updates. And within the updates, you'll see here, one of those has a linked document. I can open this document up and I can view it. Below that, there was a poll that was posted. Within this group, I have the ability to vote in this poll. I can also comment. You'll notice along the bottom, I have other options to navigate to within the group. Next to the Updates button, I have an Upcoming. This is going to show us a calendar of events that have been put into the calendar for the group. If I click into these, it gives me my directions. I also have the ability to comment. I can comment by selecting the plus symbol in the top right corner. When I'm ready to post my comment, I can select the green check mark. And now you can see my comment. If I click the back arrow, this takes me back to these other calendar items. If I select the calendar tab next to upcoming at the top, this takes me to just a calendar view. You can see I have items coming up on the 31st noted by that blue dot. Again, down at the bottom in our navigation bar, I can select discussions. Any discussions that have been shared, I can access here. I can select that discussion. I can come in, I can read the information, and I can post to the discussion here by selecting that plus symbol and then putting in my post. If I wanted to attach any items, this allows me to choose items from my own photo library. I can take a photo or video, attach any resources that I may have. I can also record an audio response, and I can select any items from any other iOS apps that are on my phone currently. Down at the bottom, you'll notice to the right of discussions is an albums tab. Here are different media albums that have been shared that I can go in and I can actually upload media and images to. If I select the media album, I can add my images or video that I have captured using the plus symbol. It allows me to choose from the library. I can select that option and then I can add a caption if necessary. When I'm done, I can select the plus symbol and now I've uploaded my image. I'm going to press this plus symbol one more time. If you notice up at the top where I have the two buttons, choose from library and take photo or video, I can add more than one image at a time. And if I add one, but then I want to take photos or videos of other things and then upload those videos or those images at this time, I can do that here as well. By selecting take photo or video, I can select whatever resolution I would like. I can take my image and then select use photo and it will post that there. Again, I can add those captions and then I can select the check mark symbol and it will upload that media. Once the media has been uploaded, it lets me know that that has been added and I can see those images there. Using media albums is a great way to get parents interacting with the group. You can use media albums for things like field trips, um, activities that are taking place in your classroom, class parties, 
any activities that are taking place within a school building where parents are invited to be involved. These again are great ways to get parents involved in your courses and in your groups and keeping them informed about what's going on within your school community and your classroom community. When I click on those three lines at the top left again, it's going to again take me to where I last was, which was in my groups view. If I select that back arrow, this takes me back to that main menu. I can also access any resources that I create as a parent. I have a cloud space for resources that I make or put together. I can also access my calendar. Again, this takes me back to that calendar view just like we would used down in the bottom corner. I can change any account settings. So this would be a great place to come in if you wanted to get notifications for different courses for your students or different groups that you're a participant in. This would be a great place to come in and to set those notifications. The Help Center is a great place to come and get that how-to information for anything that you're struggling with in the app. And then lastly, at the bottom of this menu on the left, I have the logout option. You can see that the app has a lot of different functionality and can be very informational for parents, especially as your students are moving to online learning within the Schoology platform.